Okay, yeah. Thank, thanks so much for joining us, uh, Christian and, and uh, Sebastian Yang. Um, yeah, and everybody else who's on this call. Um, so I think let us begin the session with a very quick introduction from uh, Dr. Christian mm. first, and then before we move on to some questions. Good evening. Um, so uh, my name is uh, Christian Boucherinck. I'm French. I'm the head of the division of uh, industrial design. Originally, I'm architect, but I'm also industrial designer. Just a few, few words about my background. I was studying in France, Finland, Denmark, and uh, Japan, where I completed my master and my PhD, and I've been teaching almost 20 years in June. It will be 20 years in, uh, in Singapore. Uh, I'm the head of the division since now six years, and uh, this uh, program uh, constantly improves uh, as witnessed uh, numerous uh, uh, awards we, we won, but also the, the fantastic uh, career of uh, our alumni. So uh, it's, uh, we are extremely happy to, uh, to be here tonight and to discuss uh, with you about the, the content of the program but also uh, about the different opportunity. I'm uh, so happy that uh, my former student and a very prestigious alumni, uh, Sebastian, joined us. Uh, Sebastian is an extremely, extremely talented uh, alumni who won some competition with L'Oréal, who wo work in L'Oréal, in Shiseido, and now who reach an important position in uh, L'Oréal, who moved to uh, Singapore. And he will uh, present later some of uh, his uh, professional experience. So it's uh, one of the multiple opportunity you have when you finish your study in NUS. US. Uh, we, are, we are working in many, many different fields, uh, service design, uh, uh, retail design, uh, but also uh, some uh, traditional industrial design. Uh, we are trying to find some new territory and some new domain uh, we are not limited to a specific industry. And one of the characteristics of our platform, of our uh, uh, division, is the fact that we have uh, some uh, collaboration with the industry, which opens some internship and also some uh, career opportunities. But let's, uh, I would like to leave uh, Sebastian, or maybe uh, um, Benjamin, you want to say a few words uh, after my. Uh, Humble introduction, please. Okay, so uh, Desiree and I are the host for today, uh, but we are also uh, alumnus of uh, the the course, and we are currently also teaching it back in the course as well. So it's kind of like going full circle. We, we came from the course, and then now we are teaching the new batches of students. Um, it's, it's, it's a very fun course for us, um, and therefore we kind of like enjoy teaching all the knowledge that we have gained uh, back to the students again. Yeah. Okay, I think uh, today is not so much about me and Desiree, but then it's about both uh, Christian and, and Sebastian. So maybe Sebastian, maybe you want to share a brief introduction of uh, where, you, where you came from. Were you from a poly or JC? And then how was it like in uh, uh, studying? And then what about what are you doing now? Mm, okay, sure, sure. Uh, I, am, I was previously from a polytechnic, like you mentioned earlier. Uh, and... Uh, and I was studying digital media design in Polytechnic. So it's really, really, a, you know, media and digital. Um, I, I, prior to joining NUS, I, I didn't have any experience with uh, tangible designs like furniture, interior or architecture. Uh, but it is through, through NUS that I had this exposure. Uh, I, I could, maybe what I could do now is I could bring up uh, a series of uh, photos and slides that have compiled uh, that would then uh, better explain what I do in my work. Would that be okay? Yes, we can start like this and after we'll come back, it's an open discussion. Okay. Uh, sure. We could not see the, the lovely smile of all, all world students. Please feel free to connect your camera. <laughs> exactly. Well, okay. Dr. Christian is a very, is a, a teacher with a lot of personality, so it's important that you, that you turn on your, your camera to, to build that connection with him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So please. Okay, you to, maybe let me just that... share. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it says that I can't share screen while the other participant is sharing. Ben, is there a way for me to... Yeah, sorry, I, I have stopped. I think you should be able to share now. Hey, no worries Can about that. Now? Uh, sound looks good. Okay. Okay. Let me know if 
uh, a screen pops up that says uh, store design and visual merchandising in retail yeah. design. Yeah. 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 So, so yes, uh, you know, I'm very lucky to call myself an alumni of uh, NUS industrial design. Uh, I graduated in 2015 from this course. And since then, uh, I have been in the retail industry till now. Uh, you know, the, the specialization I embark on within this industry evolves around store design and visual merchandising. Uh, I currently play the role of a regional retail design manager for L'Oreal. Uh, some of you may know, uh, you know, L'Oreal is a, is a giant beauty retail company that owns uh, multiple, multiple cosmetic brands like uh, Armani, YSL, and Kiehl's. Uh, it is really fun working here. Uh, there is great motivation to empower everybody in the world to reach their uh, beauty goals, uh, be it men or women. And, um, and most importantly, we do this in a very sustainable and responsible manner. So I really enjoy it. So it is, it is really strange to know that, to know that just uh, eight years ago, just eight years ago when I joined NUSDID, I had zero knowledge of the retail industry. I had, I had zero, in fact, I, I never had great interest in the retail industry or the beauty industry, uh, but I was lucky in, in what I had, which was uh, I had the attitude to be open-minded and I had a very amazing chance, which is to join NUSDID. Uh, and because it was, the, the reason why I say that is because uh, it was NUSDID that gave me the chance to embark on a, on a path in, in, in this uh, retail industry. So how I ended up in the retail industry, right? In, in NUSDID, students from uh, year two to, to year four gets the chance to choose you know, some platform projects to do each year. Uh, and these platform projects, uh, you know, they are offered in a wide variety. Um, there are platforms that there are platform projects that cover, you know, uh, service design, UI UX design, furniture design, experimental design, interior architecture, and, and many more. So when I moved from year one to year two, uh, I had the chance to pick from a, a series of platform projects, uh, and I decided to pick one which I have, uh, which I had zero prior experience with because. Uh, that will then give me the chance, uh, a huge runway to grow. Uh, so the platform project that I, that I picked was designing an, an exhibition booth for L'Oreal in, in Marina Bay Sands. So, um, you know, I had zero experience in interior design, zero experience in architecture, cosmetic and retail. So that was definitely a chance for me to be exposed to many new topics. Uh, so this, this platform is, well, is an industrial collaboration set by, set up by Dr. Christian. Uh, L'Oreal had the, what L'Oreal did was then they created this platform together with Dr. Christian to, to turn this platform project into a competition for students to design an exhibition booth. And, you know, the, and finally the winning design will then be turned into reality. And the students that design it will then be flown to the Hong Kong office to, to build it. Uh, and I was happy that uh, at the end of the platform, my team, which was made up of me and uh, two other amazing students, uh, we produced the design that Laura found most suitable for the event. Uh, and as such, uh, I, spent the, uh, I spent the second half of my year two in an, uh, doing an internship in Hong Kong, L'Oreal, uh, and building this exhibition. Uh, and yeah, that is how I got my first step into the, the retail industry. Uh, it was amazing. Uh, during the internship to, to see my, my, my project turn into reality. Uh, what you see now was really what was built in Marina Bay Sands in 2015. Uh, it, it's, it's, just, um, it's just great to think that just uh, when I was standing there looking at this design, I just thought that one year ago, uh, this design was a, was a little small model on my table. And, uh, and you know, this was really, uh, this, this really kickstarted, this really gave me a very, uh, healthy, healthy start to my career in, in retail. And, and since then I've been in the cosmetic industry doing retail store design and visual merchandising. So just to give you guys an idea on uh, what, what, is my, what is my occupation like in, in retail industry. So in retail industry, there are a, couple, uh, a, a few design roles, but I will group them into two, 
two separate categories, uh, visual merchandisers and retail designers. So the difference between them is they do they do cross over uh, quite quite often, but there is still uh, principally there's some difference between them. Uh, for example, retail retail designers basically design the infrastructure of a store, and then they decide where the lighting is, where the aircon is, uh, where the furniture are going to be placed, how are the customers going to be, uh, how the customers going to be walking throughout the space, uh, and then visual merchandisers they design the display, they decide where how to put the products, uh, how to then um, how to then display the products in a way that that makes the customers really, really uh, excited. You know, in this case, uh, the visual merchandising, the visual merchandising artist over here decided to to display the lipsticks together with a, a series of uh, of sculptures that look like uh, speakers because uh, this brand YSL is one that is very, very closely related to the pop culture. So yeah, working working life was working life is is fun in in, in Laurel. Um, you get to fly a lot. You meet many amazing people. And what but what I enjoy most is the end of the day. Uh, I still do a, I still get to do a lot of hands on work, which uh, which I really enjoy because uh, that really brings me back to my roots in uh, industrial design from uh, and what I learned from NUS. So yeah, uh, I hope I hope that was a uh, I hope that wasn't too long. That wasn't too boring. Uh, but that concludes my, my summary of what I've went through in NUS uh, and the kind of work that I'm doing now. Yeah, th thanks for, for sharing your, your kind of journey from school to career, um, Sebastian. So for the students, um, do you have any questions <clears throat> for both Dr. Christian as well as Sebastian? It can be anything from, you know, how is how is work life like after graduation? What sort of jobs there are? Um, anything about the course structure, curriculum, and things like that. <clears throat> maybe maybe as a first question, before we get to uh, Fang Long's question, um, we did actually have a question submitted via Instagram um, where somebody actually asked, what is um, the mindset that we as students should carry during the course? So maybe it'll be, it'll be nice to hear from both a, a, an ex-student alumni as well as uh, from a tutor's point of view. Yeah, so Christian and, and, and Sebastian, any thoughts on what sort of mindset the students should carry as they go through the course? Or maybe I'll let my, my mentor, Dr. Christian, enlighten us first. Yeah, please, please, please stop. Uh, no, 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 it's okay, please. No, 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 please, 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 please. Okay, sure. Uh, I, uh, I, it brings me back to my the, the first point I mentioned earlier on, open-mindedness. I think that is the best mindset anyone can have uh, stepping into this course. Um, again, this course opened up multiple kind of network with the industry. I am just one of the multi, uh, one of the different case, one of the many cases that found some, uh, one of the many cases that found, um, that found a career path that was suitable for me. I have many peers who graduated from the same course doing radically different stuff from me. Like uh, my close friend, Alvin Juano is now in Gojek uh, as a user researcher. Uh, I've also got friends who are working in a finance, financial institute as a digital payment designer. So yeah, the, be open-minded because there's so many opportunities here. Try as many things as you can. You will find something that you enjoy. Thank you, Young. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, just a short introduction about uh, industrial design. Uh, one of the characteristics of uh, design in general is the fact that this discipline is always moving. So sometimes the people come to us and say that they will, I need to have a background or to have some specific knowledge. With it. And I completely agree that the more you are, we are looking for some uh, students extremely open mind and extremely uh, we are, we are no, not rigid at all. When we have some interview with a student, we never, we, of course, we take in consideration if the student has some specific skill, if the student is able to draw. But if a student arrives with amazing skill, a 3D CAD, this is not the most important thing. The most important quality is the capacity to feel and to develop some sensibility uh, in a design field. 
design is always moving. When we start this program uh, 22 uh, or 23 years ago, now it was in 1999, design was radically different with now. And design in 1950 was also extremely different. So now uh, we are touching so, so many domains. Uh, we, are, uh, we are working a lot in, in service design and year after year, more, more, many, many companies call designer because we have a way of looking at the problem which is radically different from, from the, the rest of the discipline. Uh, we, of course, knowledge uh, is quite important, but it's, it's a kind of a, the capacity to, to look at the problem and also to sometimes not even look at the problem, to find some opportunity. We have some, um, I'm connecting currently one uh, platform and uh, the platform have no specific topic, mean that it's, uh, the platform is based on, first of all, observation of environment to try to find eventually some problem, but some opportunity. And from that, we start to move. So every year we have many, many different projects but I never come with a specific brief. The brief is built by the student himself. Okay, so it requires a, a quite strong open mind and this capacity to look and observe the environment and find some potential opportunity to propose some new design solution. So some many, many students during those kind of uh, op or interview open house, uh, get very, very stressed and, and, and come to me and say, hey, Christiana, I, I don't have any specific background in drawing, no technical background, nothing background. But you have to be sure that, the, that we are, it's not the point. We, you are going to learn how to use 3D CAN. You are going to draw. And we are here during the first year, if I want to summarize the whole curriculum, the first year will be design fundamental. Doing those this year, you are going to learn what we call the element of design. And we have uh, some lecturers from different backgrounds who are going to develop your sensibility in terms of color, material, form, language, semantic. And then from the second year, second, third, and fourth year, you will move to the platform system you, where you will have the opportunity to select your platform because one of the particularity of our program is to propose a la carte some uh, some uh, pro program and uh, we we don't have uh, and it's also the opportunity i don't want to be too long to to work with some partner from the industry like sebastian has been working with uh, uh, l'oréal and uh, i'm quite sure that when sebastian started the course with l'oréal he did not imagine that one day he will be in hong kong working <laughs> with the top people to develop his own design I would like to say that maybe Sébastien is one of the very rare students in the world who have the possibility to develop a project of this scale with one of the most prestigious uh, partners of the industry. So we have some projects of this scale, but we have also some projects definitely with, uh, which are definitely not related to product, but for service, organization, etc. But you will find online, if you visit our website, uh, a certain number of examples uh, of, of, of exercise we developed during our platform. But I'm talking too much. Please, Desire or Sebastian, do you want to add something? Uh, no, I completely agree with you that uh, it's important that the students don't get to, the potential students don't get too worried about whether they know drawing, whether they know how to use AutoCAD or 3D software, because uh, the, end of the day, all this will be taught uh, in school. And uh, the important part is to be open to the opportunities that this course offers you. Then Sebastian, may I, because I think uh, some of the students came to stream in quite late. And I think a bunch of the students here actually miss your amazing presentation. I'm thinking, <laughs> will it be possible if you, you just go through your slides one more time? Will it be possible? Can uh, I trouble you? Uh, no, no worries, no worries. I'm happy to do so. Um, if it isn't too boring for everyone, let's do that, no, no, shall no, no, we? No, no. We won't. Because, well, <laughs> yeah, I want it. I, I see the uh, pictures again. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let me try. I think you you, okay. you could also uh, share more about how was it common that um, industry, uh, you get uh, internship with all these uh, companies? 
like were, were your other classmates uh, doing internship at that point of time also? Mm, yeah, okay. maybe you can share that later on. Yeah. Okay, good point, good point. I'll take note of that. So yeah, uh, so let's rewind a little bit and then we could talk a bit about this, uh, my, my experience from NUS and then for, uh, moving on to my career again. Shall we? Let me know once my screen pops up, yeah? Yes, we see it. Okay, thank you very much. So yeah, again, uh, I'm Sebastian. Uh, some of you may know me as uh, my Chinese name, Yang, like Ben mentioned earlier. Uh, you know, I'm lucky to call myself a, an alumni of uh, NUS Industrial Design. Uh, I graduated in 2015, and, and since then I've been in the retail industry till now. Um, and the, the kind of work, the kind of specialization that I embark on within this industry uh, revolves around store design and visual merchandising. Uh, I currently play the role of regional retail design manager uh, for L'Oreal. And uh, some of you may know uh, L'Oreal is a giant beauty retail company that owns many, many cosmetic brands like uh, Armani, Kiehl's, Lancome, YSL, and Valentino. Uh, so it is really fun working here. There is a great motivation every day, you know, to empower people around the world, be it men, women, kids, elderly, uh, to achieve their health and beauty goals. Uh, in a, in, of course, in a very sustainable and responsible manner. Uh, so I really enjoy it. So it is funny. It is funny for me to think that uh, just eight years ago, I had zero knowledge of the retail industry. Um, but, but, but you know what I had in school was uh, open-mindedness and, and I was lucky to have the chance to join NUSDID uh, because it was NUSDID that, that gave me the chance, uh, gave me the chance to embark on a path uh, in the retail industry, which I would have never had uh, if not for that. So, so for the potential students, right, uh, I will explain that in, in, NUS, in NUSDID, students from year two and year four, right? They get to choose, um, they get a chance to choose from a series of uh, platform projects to do each year. Uh, and these platform projects that are offered in school are, are really, really wide in its variety. You know, you have platform on service design, UI US design, product design, furniture design, architecture, uh, and many more. Uh, so, so in my case, when I move on from year one to year two, uh, I had the chance to pick from a series of platform projects and I decided to pick the one that I had uh, really zero prior experience with uh, because then uh, that would then give me a huge runway, a huge runway to, to grow. So the platform project that I picked was to design a, a exhibition booth for L'Oreal, uh, which would then be built in Marina Bay Sands. Uh, because you know, I had zero experience in interior design, zero experience in architecture, cosmetic, or retail. So, so yeah, it was a good chance for me to be exposed to many new topics. Uh, this platform was created, um, was hosted by Dr. Christian uh, in collaboration with L'Oreal, uh, and um, the idea was to turn this platform into a competition for students to design an, an exhibition. Uh, which will then uh, L'Oreal will then pick which exhibition uh, is the is the winning design, and then turn it into reality. And the students who whose design is picked will then be flown to Hong Kong uh, to then to then build this project. So I was happy that my team, uh, made up of myself and two other uh, very talented students, uh, we we produced the design that L'Oreal selected, uh, which they deemed suitable for their event. And as such, I spent half of my year two uh, doing an internship in L'Oreal and building this design. So uh, when I when I see this when I see this design turn into reality, I could uh, it was it was just an amazing feeling to think that uh, to think that just uh, a year ago it was a small little model on my table, and I was being supervised uh, by Dr. Christian, who was very patient with me, and also very. Uh, and also a very strong support from the L'Oreal collaborators. Uh, you know, throughout this whole platform in school, they were sending, uh, they were sending key stakeholders down to the school uh, each each couple of weeks to give us realistic feedback, feedback from the industry, to 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 recreate this kind of real world scenario. So so yeah, that was how I got my internship. But uh, you know, I wasn't the only I wasn't the only student that that was serving internship during my second year. Uh, a few of my classmates was doing their internship as well. Uh, I had classmates who were doing internship in another beauty company, uh, Galan, 
uh, part of the LVMH group, which is also another collaboration set up by uh, Dr. Christian. And there are also students who are doing internship in, 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 in tech companies like Gojek or Grab. And then, so following that, uh, that's how I really uh, entered the retail industry. And since then I've stayed in it. Uh, my, job, my job in the retail industry, like I mentioned earlier on, uh, I re revolve around visual merchandisers and retail design, uh, visual merchandising and retail design. Uh, because those are the two two key roles in the in the retail industry in terms of design. Uh, what the retail design, what, what retail designers do is they they design the infrastructure of the store. Uh, they decide where the aircon, where the lighting, where the furniture is going to go. They design how the customer is going to uh, circulate among the, within the store. And then the visual merchandisers they designed uh, the method in in in. In merchandising the products. They want to show your product in an accessible way, but they also they want to show the product in a way that uh, relates to the customer or the brand. In this case, you see YSL, they are displaying their lipstick uh, alongside some sculptures of uh, speakers because YSL is a brand that is very tied to pop culture. And uh, yeah, my work—I would say my working life is 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 vibrant. It's fun. I get to meet uh, many different people and uh, travel a lot. Before COVID, of course, but most importantly, as you can see on the image on my right hand side, I still get to do a lot of hands-on hands-on work, uh, design, design work, uh, doing a lot of testing on furniture, uh, testing on system, just to ensure that things are built in a sustainable and. Uh, efficient manner. And, and this really ties, goes back to my roots in industry design. I learned all these skills in industry design, which, uh, which I could now, uh, which is why I could now make it to my, to my current role. So uh, yeah, I believe that's the end of my sharing uh, and uh, happy to answer any questions, should there be any. So I, I just, yes, maybe there is some question. Do you have? Yes. Yeah, thanks for sharing that again, Sebastian. Uh, we do have one question in the chat from Feng Rong. So uh, what can a student do if he or she wants to design something that requires professional knowledge in other fields? Um, is there any sort of uh, collaborations with students in other faculties or schools and things like that? Maybe I can uh, answer this. Uh, it's quite, uh, for instance, if let, let's, look, uh, let's look at the thesis, okay, the final project in final year. Is something very very common for students to do a, a collaboration with a, a psychologist or some expert in sports or in a medical field so in this case when we are dealing with some project which there is some uh, uh, specificity uh, especially in a medical field we it's quite normal even sometimes we have been working with some uh, chef and we have a kind of a co-supervision co that means that uh, it's open to the, the, the student the opportunity to to work with a specialist outside something very normal um, the simple fact for instance to work with uh, l'oréal uh, it's happened often that the people from marketing were coming for to develop some uh, specific part of the project uh, Etc. Et so it's the fact that to uh, call some external expert uh, to support one project is something very natural. And if uh, we we would like to would like to say that we encourage that uh, the student is doing some uh, literature review, uh, discuss with some expert, and it could be in, in absolutely any domain. Uh, so uh, it's something very normal and. Uh, even uh, any any architect or designer in some specific domain call some expert to get some feedback and, and we encourage that. Just I agree with what Dr. Christian said. So to 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 Feng Rong's point, uh, you're asking if if you were to do a project that requires professional law knowledge, uh, do you do you get to cop uh, do you get to cooperate with students from other departments? Yes, of, of course. Uh, if you have the need, uh, you know, so far the projects that I've done in NUS, uh, the professors has been more than more, 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 more than happy to, to introduce me to, to other PhD, to, to PhD students who are doing similar kind of research work or, or even 
taking a step far as far as uh, putting me in contact with professionals. Uh, give you an example, some of the healthcare, some of the healthcare projects that we that we do in the course is really in real collaboration uh, with the doctors in the hospital. Like uh, at year three, I found myself standing standing inside a surgical room looking at someone having their knee replaced uh, because I was doing a project on uh, on 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 camera within uh, invasive camera. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, I, I just wanted to add something which is very crucial for me, even though if it's not directly related to a question is the particularity of a course as a designer or as an architect is the fact that at the moment we are starting the exercise, the platform or the studio, we don't know the answer. And each project is unique in mathematics or in science, the, we have already the answer, the lecturer has the answer uh, of the exercise at the end of the day. In all case, each project, each studio open some amazing opportunity and we, and we never know. We never know what will be the result, which is in one way very stressful. <laughs> but, but it's also give us some uh, proud that the student is, 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 is some pride to the, 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 each student who want to develop his or her project and this project is unique. And it's also a, a specific language who is directly related to your sensibility and your personality. So this is a very unique particularity of the design field. It's the fact that uh, we are investigating and we are trying to innovate all the time. So Desiree uh, uh, and Benjamin will pass through, and also, of course, uh, Young will pass through that, uh, maybe can say a few words about that. I think this is very, very unique if I compare with some other domain in the university. Do you agree, my dear friend? <laughs> okay, is there any? Uh, yes, uh, I actually have a next question from uh, Jamie. Uh, asking whether, um, in terms of internships, uh, do would the students need to find their own internships, or are there any sort of partnerships that BID has with other organizations for such internships? So uh, we have, of course, a certain number of contacts through through a network through, through the, work, the the year year after year we have developed some. Uh, but there is two options. We offer the student two options: the fact to do some internship or to to go in exchange. Uh, for instance, because of this fantastic opportunity with L'Oréal, Sébastien uh, went to uh, Hong Kong for this internship. Uh, if some the to if some the student need to express, for instance, some desire to work in some specific domain, and we have some contact in Philips Design, we have in contact in Guerlain, Shiseido, we have in contact with IBM. Uh, if you go online, you will see the, the number of collaboration we have since more than, more than 20 years is quite huge. And uh, the, 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 the companies know our, uh, as, our reputation and uh, they are, uh, usually they are quite open to uh, uh, internship. So do not stress about the, the internship. We, will, uh, we always try to, to, to find a some partner to help. And even then, you, uh, even then, uh, what, what I understand is that some of my uh, classmates back then, they, they, they found their own internship as well. If they found a company yeah. outside that they like, they found it, or even they tap into the, in NUS, you'll get a portal. Uh, and in the career portal, you are able to find in this internship opportunities as well. So I agree with Christian. It's, it's, it's not a huge concern uh, if you and if you have the interest to do internship, you will get it. Okay, yeah, thank, thanks for those answers. Uh, I have another question actually coming in from uh, an anonymous uh, student <laughs> asking about um, actually the admissions. So um, I think this this person is coming from uh, Polytechnic. And it's asking whether, you know, with a GPA of around three plus, um, mm -hmm. how, what is the likelihood, you know, of getting into DID and how, how might students be able to increase their chance in getting into the course? Maybe, maybe it could be about some tips um, in getting through the admissions interview or yeah, any, any tips on how to increase chances to get into the course? 
But the, first of all, the university come with a certain, I don't have the detail in terms of uh, number, of, you know, but the, the university fixed some uh, rules. Of course, some, uh, we cannot be too low and to access, but I don't have the exact number now in front of my eyes. But I would like to say that the, the, the interview we, we, we have with the student, the capacity to uh, show some uh, motivation, motivation, some kind of curiosity is something very, uh, the fact that one person has some passion for some domain, uh, uh, it's uh, whatever is a domain, of course, which is not necessary design. It's something we are, which is very, very important for us. Okay, so the, the, we, we are not designer from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. We are designer is state of mind, is a philosophy. Uh, we, we are always thinking about our work and we don't consider our work sometimes as your work because it's some kind of passion. So um, I would like to say that the, when we have some interview, we, we ask the student to prepare the interview. So we, for instance, we are selecting some uh, interesting video of Diteram, some craft, et cetera, et cetera. And the student, each student we will attend for the interview will have to watch a video and come with some comment. Some students are looking at this in a very superficial way. And some have been able to highlight some very, very interesting points and express some passion about the specific domain which has been raised during those videos. So I would like to say the the curiosity and the passion for, for design and beauty and, and this field is, is one of the key criteria. I would like to say, be yourself and be passionate. It's not necessary to play any role or whatever. I just say, just, just be yourself and, and, and love what you, you want, you know, and express, express this love and, and this passion. We are not looking for, at this stage, we are not looking for some, at some expert. We are looking for some potential talent and people who have passion. And we have so many examples of uh, students uh, who, are, who come with absolutely no background about design, who finish, who are extremely successful. Okay? So this is my uh, advice. But uh, our friend, uh, our friend, uh, Young pass through this, uh, and everybody here also, uh, Desiree, you pass through this moment of interview. Can you say a few words about that? Fr from your point of view, it's important. What do you think? I think we, I, I, sorry, I, I think I, I, I chip in a little bit first. Uh, one of the things that you could uh, increase your chance of uh, entering DID is definitely during the, you know, uh, Dr. Christian mentioned that um, there is this portion where you, you, you upload your uh, uh, interpretation of the views. Um, during this uh, uploading of those files, right, you can actually also upload your portfolio and testimonials. That will actually also improve your chance of entering the course. Yeah, so do use that opportunity to, to like uh, upload your, your portfolio, those uh, uh, things that you have done throughout your whole poly days. Yeah, I agree. As in, uh, I, I mean, myself, I went through that inter. I, I went through that interview as well. Uh, uh, as much as uh, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure, great, great, uh, great is just was just one of the criteria that that the school decide whether to take a student or not. But I think that interview was really, really crucial. Um, and I think if I remember correctly, we did some kind of a. Uh, we did some kind of test on the same day, isn't it? Like uh, they gave, we were given some kind of projects. I'm not sure if that's to the, the method now. But anyone know? Sorry, maybe can you repeat your question again? <laughs> oh no, I'm saying that uh, back in, I remember that the, uh, during the interview, you were also given some design tests on the spot. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, no, it's every year we are ch changing. The, yeah. uh, so there is some uh, uh, part of the interview which is related to some video where we are we expose a student to the reality of the design world. If you remember, yeah. the Teram legend of industrial design, <coughs> and in parallel, 
we, uh, if you remember, because it was not, it was, it was not during the COVID. There is also uh, we have selected a certain number of very simple everyday product, yeah. and we ask the student to observe those product and yeah. to come with some potential improvement. If you remember, yes, and uh, this also reflect. Uh, so of course we do not ask the student to come with with nice drawing. But this capacity to observe and 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 do a, a, an analysis of what what is interesting here and how can I twist it and improve the quality, it's it, it's a very very interesting because it's it's reveal and, and reflect some kind of design sensibility. This was a, one of the key elements of those uh, interview. I don't know if uh, Desiree you remember this. Uh, phase of your interview. Any other question? Uh, yes, actually, I have a question coming in about uh, the grad school, actually. Um, I'm not sure whether, Christian, would you have the answer for it? Um, so it's coming from, Tash, yeah, <laughs> from Tasha, who is an undergrad architecture student. Uh, she's graduating yes. this year. Um, and she's wondering whether she can actually apply for the May intake of the grad school um, to continue for, for doctorate or PhD. Is there any direct path for that? Alors, there is, uh, the, alors, first of all, uh, this is a very interesting question. Thank you so much. You know, the philosophy of NUS is to move to the maximum cross-disciplinary. And uh, well, did this uh, person come from a field which is very, very close to the design field, because it's, uh, it's, it's of course, uh, architecture. And uh, we have an example the, this afternoon, a discussion to create a, a master course. And we are going to welcome some people who are coming from some background, not directly related to industrial design. So uh, there, is, there is, as for instance, to conduct a PhD, I would say the only one difficulty is to find one person or, or a master, for instance, uh, a supervisor who is interested to work because architecture is a very big domain. Okay. Uh, personally, I'm an, I'm, a, I'm an architect and I'm doing a research about design principle and Young uh, uh, is uh, associated to this research since I start now many years, no, many, a few years ago. So my field of research for which could be a PhD, I would like to say, because it could be a second PhD, given the amount of work. It's at the borderline between industrial design, uh, graphic design, and architecture. So it's absol absolutely perfectly possible to, to find a, a topic which combines industrial design or service design and also architecture. I don't see any issue. And the, the university encourage this cross-disciplinary and transdisciplinary. This is a very interesting question. Ah, another thing I would like to say, mention that, um, as you know, we are now connected. To, it's a new college of design and engineering. So we are very close to engineer friend and architecture friends. And uh, you have the possibility to select some elective in some other domain in engineering or in architecture or in building uh, to uh, increase your domain of expertise. And this is something extremely important. The university encourage the, the fact that the student try to find here and here some knowledge to support the future career. Sounds good. Actually, Christian, uh, as a follow-up question to that, right, um, with the with the new merger of the schools, now that DID is together and uh, the school uh, College of Design and Engineering, right, um, are there any implications on the design curriculum um, in any way with the merger? Uh, yes, of course, we, we have uh, some, uh, there is a certain number of courses. Uh, for instance, the course, a new course for dear colleague, uh, um, Brian, which is, will be about, about narrative. Uh, there is some course of uh, design thinking. Uh, also, there is a certain, not all, but a certain number of courses which are common we, we progressively because we are starting now. 
and progressively there is few courses which were which are common for all the college okay so there is a but this cannot be immediate of course progressively and there is we we try to try to establish some bridge of course between uh, engineering and, and industry design and we are and just to give you some example also last year we have developed a collaboration with philips design department of architecture and industrial design so we set some team with few students from architecture and few students from uh, industrial design and they have developed a reflection about the new space and facilities uh, regard, regarding the hospital health clinic etc extra so it was a very very interesting experience for all students and i hope also for architecture students to work together to share and to look and to learn more about the space and the architecture well students were look, learning more about product or service design and it was a very very fruitful collaboration uh, so so rich collaboration that very soon we will have one exhibition at the um, uh, design singapore uh, i don't have the exact date but uh, the project will be there will be a show there or in ura but it will be we definitely are currently setting the exhibition and uh, this uh, this platform has been supervised by our colleague dr yen from a DID and from Doha, from the Department of Architecture, from Thomas from the other side. So I'm a, this is a typical example of cross-disciplinary. Sounds great. It makes me want to go back to school again. <laughs> Please feel free to uh, ask a complete um, open question. Yeah, actually, maybe let maybe we can take a pause here, um, and give some time. Does any student here would you like to unmute yourself and just ask a question, um, before we we go back to addressing any questions on the chat? It'd be really nice to hear your voices. Yes. Don't be timid. I'm a very timid person. I think if if you guys offer some kind of prize to whoever asks question on this chat verbally, that would be amazing. <laughs> Is there some prizes involved, Ben? No. <laughs> you get the prize, you get the prize of jumping the queue. Yeah, <laughs> you, get your you jump the queue. First. <laughs> There's some kind of priority admission to the course if they are asked a question here, Darren. <laughs> <laughs> and then that one, a lot of people will start asking already. <laughs> Hey, sorry, can I ask a question? Yes, yes. Go ahead. Okay. please. So, uh, so I'm actually from Poly, so I'm wondering um, if the grades on the indicative grade profile is the grade that will help you to secure an interview or not? It's true, it's true that when um, I'm not in a detail, of that, but when we have a very, very high grade, it, it's help, uh, of course, to... to, uh, uh, to um, for the interview, but I think that we sh we should look we should not. That I think I, I don't know what my my dear friend here think. We should you should not think about this because you should see the interview as a very good opportunity to express yourself and also to learn to come and ask a question and the uh, uh, the the if your question are very relevant and if you express some passion for the thing, it's the the grade is one thing, but what we are also interested in is to understand your personality. Okay, this is the key element. So the the grade should not, of course, if you're rich, we come with a, a reasonable level. It's always a, a plus, and we are always welcoming when we have a top, top, top student. But let's take let look at this interview not like something we not have something terrible, but more like a human communication with some people who are a bit more experienced in this field and. Uh, the, the, the design is a question of humanity, you know, and uh, the, we, it's, it's not a cold discipline. We are uh, to, to have a vague high sensibility, uh, even some fragility, some, some uh, extreme, uh, the, the senses are extremely important for us. So this interview is very precious for us because we want to, to meet the people and to have this connection. And uh, because the idea is a small department, it's a small division, 
And in one way, it's a great advantage to both to be a small division because it's create a kind of synergy in a small group. It's become a family. It's, it's my feeling. I'm, uh, I think uh, my Desiree and uh, our friend here uh, will, uh, can talk about this. Do I answer clearly to your question? Um, yeah, totally. So, so I was wondering, um, so does, does this mean that as long as uh, we apply, uh, we'll get an interview, we'll get a chance to go for the interview? So if you're great, because I don't have in front of me the original grade, uh, which is the minimum to access to, 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 to pass for the interview, uh, if, if, you're, if your grade is reasonable, there is no, uh, there is no issue, of course, the interviewer uh, will make the difference. Great, thank you. Thank you so much for your uh, question. Jamie, I think uh, maybe just one thing to note, it is only indicative, uh, the grade. So it's not to say that it's a cutoff point. Um, it's really just, yeah, it's just indicative to show you generally what kinds of students um, have come in from previous batches. Hi, I think we have uh, someone who's raising your hand, Tasha. Yeah, Tasha. Yeah. Hello. Um, so uh, actually like, that one, I uh, the one that pre I previously submitted did not answer my question. Uh, actually, I want to ask about the intake of the grad school itself. And I know that faculty choice is really important, and I kind of like I'm familiar with it. Like we have to, if we have we're in sitting in grad school, we have to have like mentors uh to to uh to guide us to through our research. But actually, um, like I know that like. By the time uh, the May intake close, I still have not uh, officially accept like um, my, uh, my diploma or like my bachelor. But I just want to ask you like, um, because I'm graduating, that's why like some grad school allows student uh, from undergraduate apply directly to grad school. Am I allowed to do that here in the ID? Thank you. So can you answer because I do not understand the question clearly. Uh, it's just about the 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 intake. I think like uh, I I want to ask if I can apply for the May intake. You, you want to ask if you could apply for the May intake even though you haven't received your certificate. Uh, receive your bachelor yet? Is it? Is that your question? Yes. Yes. Uh, but I'm like I will be sure. Like. Uh, graduating this year because like some grad school did that actually that uh, is the ID also doing that so I honestly I need to talk with uh, with the administration about the, this case because it's a uh, case by case I I, uh, I think the university will ask uh, an official paper I'm, I, I cannot reply that what you can do is uh, you can contact uh, my colleague uh, Nadira uh, who is a uh, or secretary in charge of the undergraduate program, and she will give you all the information regarding yeah, that. Uh, uh, Tasha, I will, I will drop, maybe, uh, yeah. maybe I will drop Nadira's email yes. uh, into the chat, or alternatively, you can let me know how I can contact you, and I can pass you her email. Yes, because we, uh, we would like to be precise on this, huh? and I don't want to give you a wrong answer. Thank you, Tasha. Um, thank you so much. I think there's a question from Joey. So Joey is asking, is it okay if is it okay if I put ID as my second choice? Would my chance then become lower when I apply for the course? Ah, this is interesting because sometimes <laughs> this sometime, happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, sometimes we. Now, this is a very interesting question. Thank you. Because sometimes we have some student who put ID in third choice or even a fourth choice. That's me. And because the student <laughs> is so good, that we try to steal the student to architecture. Because the first choice was to be architecture, and we are the second choice, and we really feel some amazing potential. So. At the end of the day, it, it's a stress is on us because we, we look and we see definitely amazing potential. So <laughs> if you put us in a second choice and you show some uh, also some passion for design and explain that you are hesitating between, for example, architecture and, and you are very, very clear, the reason 
uh, it's often that we try from all sides to convince you to join our team. Is it clear enough? Uh, we have a few cases like that. Is that okay for you, Joey? Okay, cool. And then she's also, uh, he or she is also asking that, uh, is it okay if uh, the student is from a JC science stream? Um, if it's any uh, comfort, I am from JC and I am from the most science stream possible. Um, and I, <laughs> I still graduated from DID. So yes, it's completely possible and totally okay. Uh, okay, I actually have Good another evening. question. Ah, yes. Yeah, I have another question uh, from uh, Yishun. Wait, hold on. Um, Just hold on. Huh? I see that Joey has one more question. It's, she's asking if there's a... Will her being a PR... Her being a PR, will it affect the chance? I, as, a, as a student, I don't see... I, I, I haven't seen any... I have seen a huge diverse, diversity in terms of uh, we, 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 citizen we, status. Hello, yeah. we, uh, uh, there is, of course, there is, let's, let's be honest, there is, of course, a percentage yeah. of, of a foreign year, uh, but there is also a percentage, I think, for PI. And this is... Some department take... 6% of foreign year contracts and some take uh, 11 percent whatever as long as as long there is the number is reasonable I don't mean, and the fact to be PR it's a fact that you are already uh, incorporated in uh, you are already in, in a Singaporean society I'm a PR too uh, so um, the fact to be PR give you already some advantage because you are permanent resident and you have also prior I think you have priority on the on, on some um, foreign uh, student coming from India or whatever, but we, the, honestly, uh, I don't have. In, uh, we 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 are really open as a young merchant. We are very open to the diversity, and we are very happy to welcome in our you know in 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 our team uh, some students from different nationality, and uh, it's one of the richness of uh, Singapore and the richness of NUS to attract some. Um, talent from different parts of the world who participate to this diversity. I should not say that because I'm coming from abroad, so I should not consider me as a talent. But uh, we, the, the, this is a great advantage of, uh, of NUS, is the fact that we, we, we are extremely open to, to some other. Uh, as long as the student is motivated and has a certain basic level required, I don't think it's, in, it's, it's an issue. Yes, some other question? Okay, thanks, Christian. Yes, uh, I think in lieu of time, it's 8 p.m. Uh, so we'll just answer two more questions, okay? Yes. Which have already come in. And then for those who still have questions, not to worry, you can join our Telegram chat, uh, which I will send the link here. Uh, and at the same time, you can also look forward to more Q&A sessions that we have lined up uh, across the next few weeks, okay? So we'll just answer the last two questions. So the first one question I have is from Yishun, who was just asking, um, I think, generally about the whole design process. Um, is there any sort of key considerations that um, you keep in mind in your, in your own design process? Oh, this is interesting. There is so, so many research done on design process. And uh, design thinking is the discipline is by itself a design process. Um, each, each part, of course, we have, we, we develop some specific methodology, uh, especially from the fundamental to, uh, I would like to say, to guide the, the, the student and to structure the student to help him or her to develop the project with some certain number of evaluation to allow the, the project to, to develop, okay? But during, during uh, the, your study, you built yourself your own design process, I would like to say. And uh, each, I have uh, the same discussion with some architect. Many, many people are working in a different way. And the design process is also related to the nature of the project. If you are working in service design or if you are developing 
if you are in a car industry or if you are in some uh, in retail design the design process will be of course a bit different so it's it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, and every every year we have people coming with some new methodology to develop the design process so it's a very interesting and very rich domain which is always always in constant evolution okay we are not dealing with the problematic of designing a car now like we did during the 1950s of course okay and we take there is a, so so many parameters we take in consideration so many experts we touch so many domains that of course the design process is moving very very fast and i'm quite sure that uh, our friend uh, young here who is working in a retail design since he start to work with uh, uh, l'oréal when he moved to shiseido he has seen uh, some uh, diversity and some different approach Okay, Jan, you can say a few words at the professional level. Uh, yes, happy to do so. Uh, so uh, in terms of design process, uh, I, I would say that there are, what this course can teach you is that it, it gives you a set of fundamental and principles which you then can uh, apply it to multiple domains. Um, earlier, very early on in the course, you would you 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 would potentially have the chance to come across this uh, design de design analysis process uh, created by Dr. Christian. It's called the SPS uh, SPS methodology. Uh, I could go really really long talking about that because it really helped me a lot in my studies and career. But I'll just give you a very short uh, explanation. SPS methodology just means that um, it is a method whereby you you analyze or you create design based on three uh, three three key elements of all design projects which is uh, which can be broken down to semantic which is uh, what it makes you feel syntactic how it is built and then uh, pragmatic uh, how a user use it so just with using this methodology right you can already apply it to a wide range of uh, this design domain, even if it's a little, uh, even if it's a, a mobile app in your hand, you know, uh, you can already, already analyze it using these three, uh, three, five, three principles. Um, uh, say, how is it built? Uh, do you need a lot of uh, coders to, to code it? Uh, how, how does it make a user feel when you use it? Is the buttons on this app um, in a color that make user feel safe or not? Or maybe, uh, and then in terms of, uh, in terms of pragmatic, uh, are the UI, uh, are the UX of this uh, interface uh, int intuitive or not? Uh, and then this process can, this, this kind of analytical methodology could also be brought into a retail design process like what I'm doing now. When I build a store, I think about uh, how is it built? Do I need a lot of workers to build it? Do I need a huge team of people to build it? Do I need a long time to build it? Uh, how does it uh, how does it make a user feel? How does it make a customer feel when they step into this store? Um, does, do they feel that this is a, a luxury store or do they feel that this is a mass market store? And then of course, uh, how is the customers using this store in terms of how are they interacting with it? Uh, are they, are they, are they, are they, are they able to reach the shelf that you want them to reach, or are your shelves located too high? So, so yeah, in in, in industrial design in DID, you definitely will be. Uh, you, you'll be exposed to this kind of uh, methodology that will then help you uh, in in nurturing your design process across different design domains. I hope that helped. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, thank, thanks for that. Uh, so now we just have one last question from Chloe, who is asking, uh, coming from a JC student with you know no formal design experience, mm -hmm. um, what are some things that you would be looking for in uh, the portfolio, you know, from someone who doesn't necessarily have um, design projects to show. Um, yeah, what what can potentially be in this portfolio? I can give you very simple example: some photography, some discussion about food, because a good architect, a good designer, is one person who appreciates. Yes. Food. <laughs> uh, the sensibility. There is. Um, also some point of view about some piece of art. You have seen some piece of art or you want to show, yes, uh, some artists you have seen that you are very interested. Your fascination for some, for nature, which can be a vegetable, plant or insect or whatever, animal. Uh, 
it's the capacity to observe and to be passionate by your environment and this desire to try to know and uh, I, 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 I start in my little introduction to talk about food but this is not a joke this is something very very important a design if you are able to express your passion for a specific cuisine and explain why you, you like very much the, this cuisine and the characteristic is something which is very important because you have the capacity to understand identify some very very personal sensation so um, we are not expecting some very beautiful drawing you can be also interested by music you can be interested by manga and because all those the, you have to understand that the industrial designer they pick up the inspiration not in the design field we pick up all inspiration from the life in general so many projects in architecture and in design and also in retail design got some inspiration from some domain some analogy some literature some history uh, which is not directly directly related to existing design product so it's more this kind of capacity of awakening that we are looking for so do not get panicked that you are not coming for one exam where you have to come with beautiful drawing and a, a certain level of 3D CAD. No, no, not at all. You will learn 3D CAD. It's not a big deal. You will learn to draw, you will learn to make model. And 3D CAD is a tool. Drawing, it's a tool. It's, so the most important is what you have inside and what you want to express. Desiree, do I have uh, clear enough? <laughs> in my answer? Very yes, well said. Very, very well very said. Clear. Yeah. Any uh, other? Okay. Yes. Please. Yes. Maybe. I think uh, I think that's all the questions we have for today. Um, so thank you so much, Christian and Sebastian, for your time, and of course, students for joining today's session. Um, if you have any other questions, you may actually drop us a question at time in our Telegram group. So do join us there and we also keep uh, sending updates there as well. And do look forward to our upcoming Q&A sessions with other tutors from DID. So thank you so much for joining uh, today's session. Thanks yes, guys, it was a pleasure. Have a yes. beautiful evening. Yeah, thank you. And thank, thank, and thank you, you for coming because just the fact that you show you you come and you start to listen it's it's already for me it's reflect your interest i, I know it's quite late it's seven o'clock everybody's tired but it's we wanted to have uh, this op, this discussion very open not formal because this is also the spirit of industrial design and architecture thank you and i wish all a beautiful evening ciao ciao thank you see you thank bye you. bye, -bye.